Hello guys, welcome to Marvelous Designer for Beginner Series. My name is Reza and this is the second part of making the trousers for the character video. In the first video, we went through reference analysis, we blocked out our panels, we went through sewing process for our initial patterns and we inserted our guidelines. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to check that out first so you can follow along. In this video, we are going to finish this tutorial. We're going to add the zipper for our J stitch. We are going to add back pockets, side pockets, and finalizing the product by inserting stitches to the main panels. I've packed a lot of information into these tutorials, so let's get started. Let's take care of the uh, fly extension. Taylor's called this part J stitch because it kind of looks like J this line. All right, I need to duplicate this and use it as a fabric, sew it on top of this part. Now, if I go ahead and select these three and try to duplicate it because these two kind of go all the way around or along this segment, there's no way for me to cut this part. Now, what I can do, and it's a very nifty trick that I use. I'm pretty sure there are other ways as well, but that's the way I approach this. I actually go and cut this piece so I can go to transform, right click and copy that piece. And then with this viewport selected, I'm going to go control Z to bring this back. But the good thing about this, because I copied this, I can now press Control V and have the duplicated part of that. Again, it's not taking really that long. It's a very easy way of duplicating customized pieces. So I do use that trick a lot. All right, I'm going to bring in this one here. I need to make just a few modifications here and of course I need to kind of line that up so I'm just going to move this out bring it in um, pressing 2 on the 3d mode just to go to orthographic and I can zoom in at the moment it's not too bad so uh, let's see what we can work with I can at any point of time just extend that to the left and right or straighten these uh, segments what I really want to do is to straighten uh, this line here, this edge here, but uh, we'll see how we go. Probably it's too early to do that. I'm going to uh, free sew this bit. Just simulate so it's in there, but as you can see, it's way too short. Uh, so my suspicion was right. It is, it's a bit short. So what I need to do is to um, kind of move this out. I can select these two and select these two and convert them into curve points so we don't see the actual segment, um, but it's there. I am going to simulate that. A little bit flappy here and I'm pretty sure with a better material and once we have the button and the extension for the waistband, uh, that will come to place much nicer. This needs to go higher because I really want to cover this portion as well so I can insert a button. Now let's see how long this piece is. It's 25. So I need to go 25 higher. I need to offset that outline pattern. We know how to do this. You right click on it. You go to offset pattern outline. I want to go with default center and the number that we saw was 25. Now it extends it to 25. I can easily go in there and create another guideline here. And if I select this fabric and move it up, you can see it kind of lines up perfectly. So I'm just going to move it here. Probably I need to uh, redo the free stitching that we did. 
just going to go edit sewing uh, right click on the sew and go delete sewing now let's uh, sew back this part so I'm just gonna go to free sewing go in here and click and zooming in just to make sure that I'm selecting the right point go in here and click and we're sewing back this piece now we need to sew back this piece to somewhere around here uh, I need to know the length of uh, this piece which is 49.8 so I'm gonna go to add point split line right click and put in 49.8 I'm probably going to move this ever so slightly I'm just gonna use the 3d viewport eyeball it ever so slightly that's better now with that all I need to do is just to segment so this on top of this and you can see the segment so applied and if we simulate that should work beautifully there you go now again don't worry about the sort of um, looseness of this fabric and I uh, think this is bigger than what I expected so I'm just going to ever so slightly nudge that to the place I have the pants fabric because I really would like to apply or assign a, a fabric with more rigidity not only to the fly but also to the belt loops so I'm just going to select that and copy that and call this pants underscore rigid underscore m t l for material and all i need to do is to first things first apply them so i'm just going to select this guy i'm going to select all the belt loops as well and i'm going to go to assign so i assign them let's try this one gets pants rigid but the normal panels get pants well that's good and go select the material and I would like to crank up bending wharf and bending weft to something like 80 and you can see immediately you get a much sort of we get a rigid type of material and then it's much easier to apply buttons so on and so forth let's add a zipper and a button to our pair of trousers. If we look at a zipper, you can see we have obviously two sides for the zipper. So we have two separate pieces. And with the help of this slider and the elements, we attach the zipper together. Now, there is a tool in Marvelous Designer that can create all of it for us. We just need to define where to start and finish for the left hand side and where to start and finish for the right hand side. And just like buttons, you can click on the slider and uh, choose amongst different or various types of the slider. So with that in mind, and to begin with, um, let's have a look at where to find this tool. Now this tool uh, can be found in the top 3d window buttons it's in here now if you don't want to use the toolbar and just navigate and use the uh, drop down menus it's in the main menu but under materials I know and you go to zipper and you have zipper so far I have one ready so if I go in here and have a look this is one side of the zipper but the other side is not really there I don't want to connect that to here it's just way too far out basically so the other side of the zipper cannot be here should be around here so we need to kind of offset that line if that makes sense well that's easy we know how to do that uh, offset is internal line and uh, I don't want that offset to go this way so I'm just going to reverse the direction and I'm not going to extend it um, let's see probably 15 or maybe 16 should be a good starting point now that line has been inserted uh, we don't want that to be extended so let's trim it to pattern outline now we have the second line ready so with that in mind we can use 2d window you can use 3d window I do have access to both lines actually so if I go in here yeah, I do have access to both lines. I'm going to use the 3D window. I kind of find it a little bit easier. So once you click uh, the tool, 
the main internal lines uh, will be dotted and you get a blue line saying okay where to start the first side so for that click on the 3d garment where the zipper is attached let's say here then uh, move the cursor all the way down and once you're done with it just double click now it becomes gray saying that okay one side is done define the other side of the zipper that's easy you start from the uh, landline we agreed on so click drag and once you get closer to where you should end a, a blue dot will appear see that so if i go up there's no blue dot but if i get close there will be a blue dot and everything will snap to that blue dot very very convenient cool i'm just gonna double click and the zipper will get created now first glance it looks really odd because every time you create the zipper you need to simulate now it creates the the puller slider and a, a stopper as well uh, so let's go ahead and simulate and you can see right off the bat it simulates properly some of the parts are inside the the fabric there are a few ways of fixing this uh, but the, f the easiest way to fix this is to actually look at the property of the zipper now if i select the zipper here you can see it's called a zipper one the length the width and thickness now thickness is important i never leave thickness as uh, zero let's start with 0.5 and you can immediately see that some of the geo penetration gets fixed i'm going to go to one and probably 1.2 yeah that's better as soon as you go a little bit over too much if i may you don't see much of a difference so that would be your cue to stop adding thickness uh, in millimeter then we have particle distance and how well this deforms i usually bring this down to something like 15 uh, and again of course just like fabric you need to click make sure that everything is, is good to go looking at the width uh, i can go higher so maybe eight and simulate yep that's definitely better uh, another thing i would like to do in here is to change the color and choose uh, something similar so something like that uh, just a slightly brighter uh, because uh, you're never ever going to find exactly the same uh, zipper color as your fabric usually the these zippers are pre-made anyhow um, let's look at the actual uh, slider so this called is slider one you can change the name if you have more than one slider uh, I'm probably going to go here and pick something like that for the style and add a little bit of metalness to it and reduce the roughness, make it slightly glossier. Uh, the color black is a really sort of odd color for that. Although if you want metallic, you, you usually want to go with uh, pure black. I'm just going to go with a grayish type of color. Uh, there are a few uh, items here, uh, reverse zip directions, it goes up and down, moving it to the opposite side, so that kind of moves it to the opposite side, sometimes, and really just sometimes, this slider uh, becomes black, that's not the case, and if that happens, just flip the normal, and it becomes um, whatever color you assign to it, so... We didn't get that here but if you ever get that then you know how to fix it now and the zipper is fixed now the zipper is done let's do the button we did try button in various of tutorials making a, a hat tutorial uh, a case in point we used button but we didn't use button hole so for the button uh, probably going to use 2d pattern window and place the button somewhere around well actually it goes on the waistband so somewhere around here that's where we place the button so you can see the button is there you can uh, move around the button and select it with uh, the help of select move button here i'm going to zoom in just a tad and probably bring it slightly higher something like that now you have the button let's create the button hold um, 
Now, before I move forward with that, I'm just going to go to button menu. And you can either change the default or you can add a button for your pants. Uh, I'm just going to go button trousers for the style. I'm going to pick something like that. For the width and thickness and height, it's really up to you and your design. Again, I'm going to go with almost the same color, slightly darker. And with the button selected, I am going to assign that to my button. Now, it's a slightly sort of greenish color. I'm not quite like that. So I'm probably going to go a little bit towards uh, more contrast and vibrance. Yeah, something along those lines should do the trick. Now I'm going to go and do the same thing for the buttonhole. So I'm going to go to buttonhole drop down and add one. So you have the button hole and you have the button. You can fasten it if you want. So I can go fasten the button. You just zoom in and go and select the button, select the button hole, and it kind of draws that line, center of the button, center of the button hole, and fasten that. Um, if you want to see that in action, obviously you need to simulate it. So let's simulate. And you can see it kind of pulls the whole thing back in place. Now, if you really want this to kind of get closer to the zipper, that sort of flappiness, uh, you can definitely tack it. So I'm just going to tack this to here and um, maybe one millimeter should do the trick and you just go and simulate. Now, definitely that was a bit too much. I'm going to go to edit tack. So I'm just going to go to edit tag, select the tag and maybe two. Um, yeah, the two should do the trick. Let's see. I'm going to go and uh, select the tool, zoom in. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. All right, let's start with the back pocket. I'm just going to bring in some reference here. Um, my approach to back pocket was a little bit incorrect. I was actually aiming for jeans or I don't know, army pants. Whereas the design that I have right now actually asks for a, a much simpler uh, back pocket, more of a hint than the actual back pocket. So all you need to have is two panels. And again, some may have line uh, going um, from the middle to the top to the waistband. Some don't have that. Some have buttons. Some don't have that. Something like that may have uh, double buttons. Uh, some may be a little bit loose. Some may be a little bit tight. Uh, some may have even one panel instead of two. So you can see there are many different designs, many different types that you can go for. So I made a decision to actually reconsider uh, my design. And I actually noticed that for many of these pants, actually there's one back pocket and that's what I'm going to go for. So let's go back to Marvelous Designer and uh, make reasonable adjustments to our design. Here I am in Marvelous Designer. First things first, I need to enable internal lines so I see what I'm doing. Now I need to make sure that I know which one I would like to go for. So I would like to keep that one and get rid of that one. Right now they're uh, linked. So I'm just going to select both of them. I'm going to go remove linked editing. So I can easily go in here and select the internal lines in this 2D pattern and just focus on one at a time. Now I'm going to go in here and probably having this is going to be a huge help because I can actually use that to my advantage. I can select that copy and paste and bring it back to 
um, have my two panels. If you remember, some of these guys have two panels. Uh, right now it's um, too thick. So what I can do is actually to delete the first one and tweak the top one here. I'm gonna go to edit pattern to edit my going to lower it just a tad probably would be a good time to copy and paste it right now that should do the trick now all i need to do is to now all i need to do is to create a pattern route line from these move them up and stitch them back to what i have here and i'm going to sort of trace one of these guys that should do the trick I'm going to select it, move it up. Now I'm gonna control V, control C. So it's very clear what's going on. The one goes to here, another one goes to here. You need to have internal lines for your top stitch. I better do it now before I forget about it. So um, I'm just gonna select all these two, right click and go uh, offset as internal line. I better zoom in and offset as internal line. So right now I've got five, which is way too high. Maybe 0.6 should do the trick. Yep, I'm happy with that. So that can be used later on for my top stitch. Now, one thing you need to constantly remind yourself with is, although my um, panels or patterns look correctly positioned in the 2d pattern window that's not the real position of these patterns you always need to constantly go in here and find those patterns in 3d and make sure that they are positioned correctly so that's one thing you kind of need to be careful about that do not rely on 2d patterns to do the job for you they're not going to position the patterns we talked about this i believe in the very first video for example you can clearly see that the uh, normals have flipped so if i go in here and remove the thickness you can see i've got flipped normal so i need to select both of them right click and go flip horizontally and now they're looking correctly uh, i'm going to press E to just bring it ever so slightly closer to what I have right now and just position it as close as possible. Now um, I can do the sewing, uh, which is a pretty much very simple segment sewing scenario that I have. So let's do that really quick. I'm just top to top and bottom to bottom and side to side. Before I press simulate i can actually create the button here as well that's totally an option so let's do that before we finalize everything so i can go to button and i'm probably going to create a new button because this button is going to be slightly smaller than the other button so i'm just going to duplicate that button just going to go back btn for button everything stays the same uh, only the width changes i am going to click on a button just to see the size first and based on that i'll make the decision so that definitely is big uh, i need to reposition it as well so bring it a bit uh, lower and maybe reduce it in half no, that's too small now. Uh, yep, that should do the trick. All right, now I'm going to do the loop really quick. So it's basically a, a pattern outline that I'm going to tack to the uh, underlying fabric. I'm just gonna mute the video and let you guys watch how I do it. We've done that before. If you cannot follow what I'm doing at the moment, make sure to go back and check some of my previous videos.
it's working much better and you can see that I can now push the button back and reposition it correctly. A little bit of manual work but nothing too complex really. And there we have our back button. And by the way, um, if you are kind of worried about these lines, so if I go in here and look at these lines, you can totally uh, delete them. But remember, there is an option here that you can just, you can hide the internal lines. And um, sometimes just seeing the fold underneath gives you the impression of the pocket. So although you don't have that, you don't need that, I actually tend to um, leave that intentionally because you can actually play around with fold and go in here, increase the fold strength to something like 10 and just create that sort of hint. So if I turn off, you can see the crease is kind of there, which gives you an impression that, all right, there, there is a, a pocket underneath these pants. All right, um, that should do the trick for the bottom, for the back pocket. In the next lesson, we are going to finish the side pockets. All right, let's take care of the pockets. I'm gonna do it on one side and leave it with you to just copy the whole thing to the other side. Now I need to extract inside the pocket first. So I'm just going to select inside the pocket and the trick we use with the J stitch will work in this case as well. So I'm just going to cut that and select the fabric, right click on it and copy. Then I'm going to undo that so I have the paste of that in the memory control V to paste and here's inside the pocket. Uh, we don't need this part anymore so I can just cut that and get rid of it pressing delete and now I have this piece which can be used for inside the pocket pressing W in here zooming in getting a little bit closer I don't need this line anymore, so I'm just going to delete that as well. Now let's get to the stitching part. Let's sew everything together. I'm going to free sew this part to this part. Go to edit sewing and reverse the sewing. Continuing with my free sewing and from here to here and then from here to here. So if I'm looking at the 3D view, you can see the bottom is connected to this part. And the top is connected to the other side of the panel. Now we need to take care of the top and of course along the pocket. With along the pocket, it's actually fairly simple. Segment sewing this bit to the internal line that part is done as well as you can see for the top part is also very straightforward segment sewing this part to the waistband the area that is actually uh, left alone and it's empty now i'm looking here and it's been connected perfectly now there is one quick thing that you need to do and that thing is you need to change the layers so you need to select everything and change the layers to one so everything goes forward and then you select this patch alone and set that to zero and that pushes everything backwards so that helps marvelous designer to understand the priority what fabric should be in front of the other fabric if you remember we did the same thing with this little loop here as well. We use the same trick. Okay, uh, with what we have, hopefully that should work. I'm just going to reduce the particle distance to 10 and I'm going to save. As usual, we always want to save before we simulate and let's hit simulate. Cool, you can see um, it's actually working 
beautifully. Uh, don't worry about that line here. I can actually select this line and say fold rendering to off because I really don't want to see that line. To help it better visually, when you finish, you can just go ahead and hide the visibility of the internal line so you don't see it. And when you click away, you just have the pocket. Now, if you want to get a little bit more fabric, you work with shrinkage weft and warp. So I can go in here, 105, 105, and you can see I've got a little bit of leftover here and there, or you can go too tight with 95, 95 and get a, a sort of a, a more solid version. So that's that for the side pocket. There is not much to it. It actually looks pretty good and internally everything is closed in case if you want to send it to other software packages for uh, simulation. Okay, I'm gonna quickly mute my audio and do the same thing for the other side. We're almost close to the end of this lengthy tutorial. So let's finish this and move on to the next chapter. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to the next chapter. All right, guys, final chapter. Let's go over our top stitch and um, get this done. And with that, we can wrap up this project. Now for this particular type of pants, um, I'm looking at my reference over here. You can see the, uh, the stitches are pretty, I would say, delicate and refined and they're not ginormous. You don't notice them. The distance between each stitch is not too far. The thickness is not too much. So with that in mind, let's go over the strategy we are going to use for top stitching. By the way, if I bring the reference back, also I'm noticing double stitching on the side seams. So that's something to be mindful of. Okay. Let's get back to Marvelous and uh, finish this. First things first, I need to insert my guidelines. With that, I'm gonna go to Edit Pattern and going to the bottom. I would like to have double uh, stitching for the bottom as well. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to zoom in a little and right click, offset as internal line and going a bit higher, number of offsets, it's going to be two. Yep, I'm quite happy about that. For the seams, I'm going to get a, um, a lot closer to the actual edge of the segment because um, as it can be seen on the reference, um, we don't have too much offset going on around the edges. So I'm going to select all the edges for the main front and back panels. Um, again, I'm going to zoom in a little to have a little bit of comparison here. Right click offset as internal line. And again, a reminder for you guys who may not know what I'm doing, I'm actually inserting guidelines for my top stitch. So um, two is not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna go with three. You can see I'm fairly close to the edge uh, and that's how I want this to look. I'm going to insert them and uh, there will be another one on the other side of the seam. So by the end of it, once you finish everything, it looks like double stitching. All right, I'm gonna go all the way up to see what I have. I'm going to select these guys and gonna get really close. I already have actually an internal line made for these two passes. So not too worried about that. This will be inside the pocket. We don't need that. Um, I need top stitching for the belt loop. So I'm going to select all of these guys. 
And again, you don't need to see me doing this over and over again, pretty much using the same tool. I'm gonna mute my microphone and go over the whole process. Um, and we come back once it's done. All right, I'm ready to go. All I need to do is to start adding my top stitch. So I'm in top stitch menu. I can go to add. You remember, I always want to add the top stitch material first, tweak that a little bit. And based on what I'm getting, the feedback I'm getting, I will start tweaking. Right off the bat, I know offset of 3.2 millimeter is way too high. I'm going to reduce it to one. That's a no brainer. Uh, thread thickness is pretty low. I'm gonna go to 0.4. The rest, I honestly don't know and I need to change it for the color. I do know what I want. So I want the same material or the same color as the fabric just ever so slightly brighter. Now, I'm go of course, I'm going to tweak that later on, but for now, that should do the trick. I'm gonna go to top stitch, segment top stitch, and let's apply top stitches. So I'm just going to click, click, and apply the top stitching to my internal lines. Um, let's go and see what top stitching I need to apply and how I'm going to kind of get the result I want. So I'm going to go to top stitch seams. Let's have a look and see how we can improve on what we have. Uh, space, I'm just going to lower it to one. Length, I'm going to increase that to two. Space to 1.3, maybe 2.9, getting as close as possible. And for the thread, I probably go with 0.5. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. I'm just gonna go and um, finish uh, apply top stitching to the rest of them. And based on what I'm getting, I'm going to tweak the top stitch properties. All right, I'm looking at this and 
it looks pretty neat. So if I zoom in, you can see double stitching is happening around the edges. I've got double stitching for the pockets and a nice stitching situation for the J stitch and then for the belt loops and everything looks correct. You can add more for the button if you want, but um, right now actually I'm pretty happy with what I have and now this is ready to be exported. You can actually export this in case if you're not 100% sure how to export the items but that should do the trick for this lesson. It was a little bit longer than usual because I really didn't want to miss any step and just cut corners on crucial information that you guys may need to have. But hopefully that workflow can be applied to any other types of pants with sort of similar style. And you should be able to kind of deviate from what I showed you and get a little bit creative and add different styles. For example, change the style of the pocket, um, make the pants a bit baggy, change the number of belt loops, so on and so forth. Even add side pockets is something that you now should be able to do using the same workflow that we have for this tutorial. Hope you found this video useful, guys. Thank you very much for your support. You can find me on Twitter to see what other projects I'm working on. And um, have a great rest of your day. See you guys later.